All right, so with where we're at right now, we've got an airplane which has two halves and no propeller. And that's what we're going to try and finish up. So what I want to do is I want to actually combine these two parts of the model. They're currently separate, and I just can't have that by the time that I'm done. So I'm going to select both parts of my model, holding down Shift to grab both sides, or by dragging a selection over both parts. Just make sure you don't have image plane selected as well. And then I'm going to go to Mesh and choose Combine. I need to combine these objects to make them one object before I can merge their components. So I'm going to Mesh Combine. You'll see a Poly Unite 1 in your input stack. And now, this is actually one airplane. However, if I go to my center edge and select a vertex, there's actually two vertices in the same spot. Now this is crucially important though. I'm going to go back to before I combine these. If I right click on both sides and try and grab my vertices and go to Edit Mesh and choose Merge, well, you know what? Nothing is going to happen. They're not going to merge. Crucially, crucially important. Before you merge, I'll say it again, before you merge, you have to select both sides and combine your objects. Then you can come in, oops, that's ver vertex faces. Then you can come in, select your vertices, and merge your components. Combine your objects, then merge your components. And as you see here, now I've got one vertex. I essentially have to do this with all of the vertices on my aircraft. And so what I actually want to do here is walk along my aircraft in wireframe, holding down shift, dragging a selection over all my vertices as I go along the center line. Careful to make sure that I don't select vertices that are off the center line, like these over here. There's actually no vertices there. I'll grab these. I'll grab these. And again, I'm walking my way very slowly across the whole model, holding down shift, and adding all of these vertices to my selection. One of the tricks to make sure that all of these are exactly on the center line, and you know what? Looks like I actually missed one right here. We'll go ahead and grab those. One of the tricks to make sure these are exactly on the center line, and, and look, you can actually see some of them have come off of that center line, which are kind of dangerous. Those actually won't merge if I'm not careful. I want to move these all at once back to the center. If I hold down X to snap to grid, I can snap these to the center line. But they're not actually going to snap to the center line. The average of all of these vertices is going to snap to the center line. And actually, in this case, it looks like it got it. But one surefire way to do this is to go to your tool settings window and turn off retain component spacing, which is actually what I've already turned off, which is why that just worked. But if you make sure retain component spacing is unchecked, and then hold down X while dragging this, you're going to automatically force all of these to be snapped to that grid. I'll make sure I return, uh, return this to being on, the retain component spacing value to being on when I'm done, because nine times out of 10, that's what you're after. But now if I have that selected and all these vertices are back on the center line, essentially I have two vertices right on top of each other within a distance of about 0 0.001 from the other one. They're almost right on top of each other, or they physically should be. So if I go to Edit Mesh, and go to Merge, and go to the Options box next to Merge, I can set a very, very low threshold number, 0 0.01, for example. And if I hit Apply, all of my vertices that are within 0 0.01 units of each other Essentially, in this case, all the vertices that are just sitting right on top of each other, those are going to merge. If I make this number too high, 
notice that all of your vertices are just going to come together into one point. So you have to find the right value. And that's why sticking with something like 0.01 is always a good idea. Once they're merged, I'm going to go to Normals, choose Soften Edge, Edit, Delete All by Type History, and again, save my scene since it's no longer two halves. Save my scene as a new scene file, and I'm on Airplane 6 by this point. I'm also going to go into my hypergraph. And you'll notice that I might actually have a couple of extra nodes in here. Now I have three nodes that represent my cameras. So those are fine. You can keep them where they are. But I've got a P-Cube 1 node, which has a white sort of rhombus logo right next to it, and a Polysurface 1 node, which has a blue plane. The P-Cube 1 node is old and actually references the history of the original cube that we created in the scene. It's no longer needed, so you can delete that out. Polysurface 1, well, let's rename that airplane underscore body. And now we've got a good group node. Let's create another group. We'll do control G from this. We'll rename this group whole airplane because we're going to put the propeller into this in just a bit. For each of these groups, I'm going to go to modify and choose center pivot so that I can eventually fly my aircraft. And I'll just hit save again, control S. Let's quickly create a propeller for this. And to do that, I'm going to start out by making a polygon cone, because I think that closely represents the shape that we've got. I'm going to put this right out in front, rotate it forward exactly 90 degrees using my channel box. And I will size this up till I feel it's at the correct proportions, which is probably going to be easiest done if we're in the side view. So one way to actually deal with this is instead of pushing it all the way towards the edge, just grab your vertices, bring them really far forward. There's my bottom face. Let's extrude this out. A little bit more, piece by piece each time. A little bit more. Hit extrude, go right to the move tool, then to the scale tool. And since no one's actually going to see inside there in that last phase, just hit delete when you're done. Or you can hit extrude one more time and scale this together and delete that face out. No one's going to see it. I'll go to normals, choose soften edge, and I'll have a pretty nice little nose cone. I'm going to jump ahead here and create propellers just so we can see this at the end. Uh, and when we pick up in just a second, you're going to see we're going to actually have propellers grouped into this. Here I've quickly modeled a propeller. And if I take my pivot point by hitting insert on the keyboard and actually hold down V to snap this to vertices and perhaps snap this right to the center I can duplicate this and rotate out multiple propellers. If I group these propellers by selecting all of them, holding down shift, and parenting them to that nose cone, I can then actually rotate them with that nose cone. And if, say, we go to our window hypergraph hierarchy, if I was to rename this propeller, well, I could simply group this to the airplane. And you know what? I've got an airplane that can move and has propellers that could rotate. So I hope you've enjoyed this video series. We think we've successfully made an airplane from a box model. I'm going to just edit, delete all by type history, Save this scene one more time and we'll be done. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.